All right, folks, we're back. And uh, Kelzer was kind of contemplating during the break. He's like, I kind of want to take a break and eat some food, but I also don't want to lose the momentum that I've got going right now. He's been taking on Korean Protosses. So uh, we are just getting into the lobby for Classic versus Kelzer. Coming up. Yeah, so Kelzer's actually just been... Uh... Killing everyone, uh, which is pretty cool, just because he's uh, uh, had a little bit of a rough spot there at, uh, at WESG. Turns out, um, when you put, you know, I don't know, the Koreans in that tournament kind of just like killed everyone. So if you were non-Korean, um, you had a rough time there. Uh, and then coming over here to Korea, to kind of you know get a little bit of that little bit, little bit of it rub off on him. Of course, already a pretty great player, and now training at the Base Trade TV house. Uh, Looking pretty good since he uh, since he's gotten here. I don't know guys like Major who just like flew in a couple days ago, still kind of you know struggling to sort of get fully inundated. Uh, but Kelzer at least doesn't seem to be having any problems. Mm. Looks like they're both ready to go though. So let's hop into it. First map gonna be Whirlwind, Whirlwind, Whirl. Wind. Man, I'm actually jealous because you've seen like you've you've been to the house and seen the house, the training house, right? Oh, yeah, I, 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 I have only just barely seen pictures of it. <laughs> well, really... if I'm not mistaken, uh, the video guy is going to publish one of no, 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 no Regrets fabulous vlogs, and you'll be able to see a little bit more of it there if I can just hype that up for a second. Yeah, we actually we have got a lot of cool video content planned through the house, too. Some player interviews and ideally uh, getting some over-the-shoulder practice footage and all that good stuff. But I'll have to wait patiently just like the rest of the fans because, uh, yeah, I'm not living there. But uh, we are in game number one of a brand new best of three. You all are tuning in to the BTSL, the Base Trade Star League, powered by Twitch. And I'm casting with Rapid Casting, guys. But you should know me, it's Rifkin and Spawning in the bottom right. It's none other than the Blue Protoss, one of the best Protoss classic. Yeah, classic. The chin toss. If you've ever seen this guy, uh, it's pretty easy to tell exactly who he is because he actually just looks like a baller. His opponent from Root Gaming, this is Kalazur. He has been on fire, not actually in the clan, like the, the base trade TV house. I Yo. still call it the on fire house because basically actually, all the no, 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 no. We, we actually legally can't, as I learned most recently. Because uh, I know that the on fire thing is like this funny thing going on with No Regret and Scarlet, and it's been going on for a while. Neeb and Klein on fire and all that, but because there's actually a casting organization or a media organization that's recently uh, trademarked and copywritten is on fire, we legally cannot refer to the house as the on fire house because it does not involve <laughs> anyone from their company. That's so sick. I did not actually recognize that. But I didn't even know it was a up. thing until I saw, um, was it like Anders and someone else like uh, doing uh, CSGO casting or, or was it Overwatch? I can't remember, but I saw the promo and I'm like, wait, why do they have on fire? I messaged No Regret and I'm like, did you guys make this like a big deal? You got huge ass casters like on your team? And they're like, we haven't heard about it. And then there's, there's this room on fire productions or something. And I'm like, Oh shit, like, we could get in trouble well, if we do this, guys. No, no, actually, uh, what was trademarked is the full name Room on Fire, so as long as it's just on fire, I think that's okay. That's but... not what Blizzard told me, so, uh... <laughs> okay, hey, well, then we will go with that. But we should also actually talk about some other stuff that's happening, like, like the a proxy, proxy Stargate. Stargate, yeah. Well, so here's the thing that I think is really interesting. I, first of all, I know already a lot of the Koreans have actually been respectful and fearful even of Kelzer to some degree. And they've talked about how good he is uh, in our little like lobby chats with them. But Classic has just come off of fighting like on stream to tons of games against players like Innovation. And I imagine things like Macro and other things, they're a little too obvious and they clearly didn't work. And... Um, I mean, who's uh, Maru fought, was it Deer the other day too, where it was like a 11 0? <laughs> Protoss yeah. Macker games aren't looking great right now. But players like Root, Hero, and others have actually been winning a lot of games getting cheesy by doing things like this. And I, I personally think this is a much better, stronger opening. And the placement of this pylon is going to deny a tech lab, but also still give that same overcharge. That's actually so sick. I, I did not realize that that was so well placed and it is going to be uh, a little bit difficult to deal with. Oh, is he actually going to go with this one? No way. So sick. 
He goes for the one in the middle. He actually gets taken out, so it's just barely not enough, which sucks. But that Cyclone getaway does get repaired. Oracle comes in now, too. Here's that second overcharge, and Classic's laying it on thick. Oh my god, this is actually just so devastating. Oracle right there means that nothing uh, can really get too close to that. I mean, sure, Cy Cyclone Lock-On will eventually uh, kill that uh, Mothership core, but not before the damage is done. This, okay, so by the way, the pylon in the mineral line was certainly beyond cheeky, and I didn't think it would work or not. This pylon, though, what I really liked about it above all else, on top of what the things we just said, it was high ground vision if the Mothership Core got pushed back for any reason. But the Widow Mine gets taken out immediately, great focus fire out of those Oracles, lots of damage potential still here, even with just the Mothership Core and the Adept. And let's not forget, she's going to have energy for another overcharge in about 9 seconds. And with double oracles now out, and I believe more on the way, yeah, it's going to be a third and fourth one even queued up. This aggression is not stopping. <laughs> I mean, Cyclones, they might be good at taking out that pylon, but even the pylon now getting overcharged will survive a little bit longer. I am actually wondering if he's got the capability of straight up killing this factory, by the way. That's going to really suck. The Wood of Mine gets picked off too. No chance to survive over here. Kellas are feeling the pressure from this attack. Oh. His army supply is suffering greatly right now. Yeah, Rifkin. I don't know. This looks like there might just be too much damage done. Now three oracles. The fourth one just now popping out. I, I mean, what has he got to defend here? That's just uh, that is not enough marines. He's got two marines, a fully repaired cyclone, and a whole lot of oracle <laughs> coming his way. By the way, I just want to chat before we say, like, so what, you can't legally yell the house is on fire? No, but we can't brand it and advertise it, guys. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what Major was trying to do. He sets the house on fire. Oh, He's like, I see. Oh, guys, it's literally on fire. And that's why it? the alarm is going off all day. This makes sense. Oh, he's so clever, Major. What a, what a metagamer that guy is. <laughs> But okay, these oracles, well, oracles in this number just like flying over killing that they kill yeah, the I bunker man like the oracles killed the bunker man <laughs> oh, yeah, he actually landed that viking for a second there widow mine does take out another oracle coming in and he's actually might lose the viking if he lands it too much but he's got to find a way to deal with these deaths now it should be noted this looks so devastating for kellas and you guys are like tearing your hair out like not like this but he's getting widow mine hits on these oracles he's starting to push this back in classic hasn't actually killed enough SCVs for this to truly be devastating it. His own natural base is only just finished up while this was going on. So Kellis already has a really large SCV count, so that's why they're still on even footing. It's all going to come down to the army going forward. Oh, yeah, that's on, a nice uh, pickup. That's a really nice pickup. Even too, but the, the army is really what's going to make the difference here. And the Stalker's now coming up. That Viking will not be able to have you know basic impunity over these... Uh, uh, Oracles, uh, Widowmine hits are actually starting to you know, get a little bit uh, too annoying, but they haven't really stopped this push for now, and I... more and more damage being done. I mean, Kelser's in a rough spot. I really want to see him continue Viking production, actually. Not just will it push back the Oracles and possibly the Phoenix, but again, they're really good on the ground versus Stalkers now. Not really good. Like, Stalkers will still beat them in these numbers, but still uh, an, a, a, good, a welcome addition, to say the least. Bunker goes up, though. He's going to try and repair it. Doesn't have enough SCVs, maybe? Oh, it's enough to scare him away, though. Still just kind of poking and limiting at least this, uh, you know, natural expansion from coming down. But still, you can produce uh, workers off of two orbital, uh, two orbital, two orbitals. <laughs> which for some reason, I can't say. I don't know why. <laughs> this is good practice. You know what? I'm getting out of the way all those hard words What's i got up? a tongue twister for you and this is one that is like deceptively difficult because it's not right. actually that difficult right the phrase toy boat like you know you're in a bath with a toy boat ah i bet you can't say that five times fast toy boat toy boat toy boat toy boat toy boat. that's hardly fast you're like with toy, toy, boat, toy boat toy boat see you can't even get okay, two yeah, okay 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 it depends on what your definition of fast is okay man. but you can't like slow whisper like Toy boat, toy boat, toy boat. Like, that's like ASMR. That's not fucking tongue twisting. Like, oh, I'm a, I am a big fan of ASMR, but either way, uh, you're right. That is fairly difficult. Okay, I got, I'm super glad. I got one for you. You can say this at any speed, but it's a difficult one. All right? So you can actually go slow with this if you want. But Ness P. Ness P? Yeah, say that five times fast. Well, I, luckily I was bullied a lot growing up, so I'm uh, I'm privy to your shenanigans there. Damn it, uh, Rifkin. <laughs> Fingers are crossed, man. Fingers are crossed. Thankfully, thankfully. See, this is why there's no such thing as a bad situation. You can learn something from everything. Oh. 
Well, Kelzer finally gets a little bit of payback. He's finally stabilized at home, but he hasn't secured his natural, which really sucks. So he's still starting to fall behind. The worst feeling for a Terran player isn't that you got SCVs or not. It's that you overmine the one base that you were stuck on for so long. Because as Kelizer expands, he's expanding to one base. This isn't a two-base scenario for him. Whereas back at home, Classic still has pretty nice mineral patches in the main. He's got that third base up. And frankly, Kelizer might have to just double expand to make up for this. I mean... Look at that. He's down to two mineral patches, and these are almost empty. <laughs> yeah, uh, bases mine out ridiculously quickly. In fact, if you're like, you know, I remember playing that Wings of Liberty game, and now you're coming back to watch, you're you're not going to be prepared for how fast these things mine out just because uh, once you're stuck on that long, especially for Terran, you're just muling away. Yeah you're gonna lose all those minerals. And in fact, uh, let's do a quick count. There's 90 on one patch, 125 on another. Uh, that main base is basically gone uh, when it comes to income. So now he's gonna have to oversaturate his natural and that'll mine that base out. This is why I think that you know, StarCraft does so well as a game is because oh. when you think about Terrans, they're just like basically strip mining wherever they go, taking those natural resources and uh, it's not going to make the base last for very long. Kelzer also doesn't see these observers, so there's no no scans going down to pick them off. And more importantly, Classic sees this coming, and as we can see in here, he's been setting these traps down all over the place. These Marines are going to get caught in the stasis. That's a good chunk of Kelzer's army missing from this fight. Picks up the tanks on the backside. Oh, no. He's got plus one weapons on the Marines, which is nice, but again, half of them are frozen in time. They can't help at all. All the tanks getting picked off there, and uh, there's another Kelser stasis drop. Actually, lift up and drop in the main, but no, nope. that's gonna get nope. shut down by overcharge. Oh god! This game really well handled by Classic. GG's get called, and that will be a one-zero for the Protoss. Damn! All I gotta say is like Classic just looked good, and it's not just good. He came out with that ballsy strategy. You were actually talking about how a lot of Koreans start to you know really respect Kelzer. Classic was just dropping the disrespect. He's like, I'm gonna <laughs> proxy Stargate, mass oracles all over the place, still keep the pressure on, and just follow it up there. Uh, even though there were like kind of signs of life, like a little bit of harassment from that uh, window mine there at the end, able to like defend the early oracle harassment just barely. Uh, that was actually just damn solid play by Classic. So super glad that we did decide to cast this uh, uh, this uh, quarterfinal match. I'm really interested to see if Kelzer can come back. The winner of this, by the way, update to the brackets is uh, gonna have to face off against Bion. <laughs> So this has been an this has been an incredibly tough side of the brackets. But again, the top side had people like Dark and Stats and Hero and Jokshi. I mean, that was not exactly much easier than this. Okay, I've got the map. It's gonna be Vani Research Station coming up next. <laughs> I just declined your invite. I, by the I way. saw that. That was like an I'm, instant shutdown. I'm super good at this whole joining lobby thing. Let me just throw that out there, guys. I if feel you like, just, like you're you're like you, you've been in a hospital, right? You've been recovering, so your legs are like a little atrophied, and getting up to walk is like difficult. Guys, if you just actually just suck at everything, don't worry. You can still be a caster. I'm living proof of that. So, it is uh, it's still it's still possible. So. Holy cow. All right. Well, I am here being joined by quite a few other people. So if you guys want to watch this in Korean, I guess Crank is still streaming those, right? Yep. Uh, Korean and Alicia, I think, are the ones casting it. Sick. I uh, actually watched my first tournament with no English commentary because I'm trying to work on learning Korean. So I was listening to the Korean commentary the entire time. It's so sick. But, you know, our commentary is pretty good too, Riff. Just saying. Yeah. You give us a solid... Two out of ten, or five out, ten out of ten. Oh, okay. I was, okay. I was thinking golf scores, man. <laughs> okay, well, this is not golf, Rifkin. This is StarCraft Two. Gotta get your game name straight. Okay, well, we're loading into our next game. Yeah, and it is map number two in the BTSL. Uh, again, both semifinals and the grand finals set to go after this, guys. So we've had a really nice run catching this guy. I hope it doesn't end here, but he's on match point and looking for some cheese. At the top side, we got the red Terran, Root Gaming's Kelazur. Or if you're Maynard, you go, Kelazur! As deeply and manly as you can. <laughs> My vocal cords are not nearly as metal as here, so that sounded actually terrible. 
But uh, this guy on the other side, this is going to be trust who should not or classic. I'm 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 stuck in the you past. You should man. trust him that he's classic. Yes, I, <laughs> I, I I trust rapid casting. Yeah. Well played. So yeah, this is classic, and he's gonna have a proxy barracks coming his way. I feel like this is sort of the Kelliser special. We've seen him do it three times in three series, and now it's classic's turn to see what he can make happen. I mean, every time though, it has been scouted, and maybe this time it won't be. Uh, by the way, quick thank yous to Royal Prospecting for those bits. Generosity is appreciated. But this this barracks, unscouted or scouted, Classic will know what's going on because by the time the probe gets to this side of the base, there are certain buildings missing that should be at home. Yeah, uh, that thing that you kind of need to have happen, uh, oh? like, you know, building barracks and Unless, your base. Does he not scout because he's taking his own detour? Uh, I mean, you, you should probably walk your... Oh, no, he's actually going to be uh, building a proxy pylon of his own. But... Sometimes the best counter cheese is cheese itself. <sighs> Real quick, uh, to respond to Burdock101 in chat, G2A does not sponsor Base Trade TV anymore. We chose to part ways with them a little while ago. Twitch is the only sponsor for this event, by the way, even though we are sponsored by Corsair. And then last but not least, I actually think the Reaper is the better proxy in this situation. I, there's no without the second pylon covering the other half of the mineral line. There's no overcharge to shut it down. The second pylons across the map. <laughs> so when this reaper does come in, he'll be able to see that there is no second pylon. So that should already clue Kelzer in that he's got a little bit of craziness if, going on coming back his way. But you got to consider what Kelzer makes at home by default has been a cyclone every game so far. Maybe this is that conviction that says like, ah, oh, I should maybe make a widow mine first instead. But either way, defending against the Stargate play won't be difficult for him. In the past, an Oracle could 1v1 a Cyclone, and it was laughable. Now the Cyclone's okay, the damage is garbage, but it got a huge health buff, and that's what keeps it alive versus the Oracle. Yeah, and you can just mass repair it with SCVs as well. So uh, one Reaper gets picked off. Uh, some more probe kills coming in, but it still has not been incredibly effective. So still going to keep an eye on this Oracle Harass, which should be coming in. Uh, or actually, no, it's Void Ray coming out. Okay. Oh, this is problems. The Void Ray is slower than the Oracle or the Phoenix. So the it will deal more damage to Cyclone. It will kill a Cyclone straight up in a 1v1 fight, but the Cyclone can kite it around. Also, I do want to point out, Kelzer has placed his starport in a very different position. I think he's sick of it being revealed on that right side and it's been seen three times or two times in a row. So he changes it up. But this Void Ray, I'm, I don't know, Rapid. This is going to be really tight for Kelzer, but I think if he controls this perfectly, he should be just fine. Well, he's got. Cl he's going to have to worry about uh, Cloak Banshees here pretty soon, as that is what is just now oh, started no. on the proxy follow-up. He really wanted that pylon dead, but got a little bit deep. Now that cyclone's really low, and you can't fight the void ray like this. No, man, you cannot out repair a, uh, a void ray with that prismatic alignment going oh, on. Oh no, he couldn't get out of range. Yeah, that nice little speed buff on the void ray most recently helped oh, keep geez. up with the cyclone, and now there's just nothing here to fight against. There's so many SCV kills about to come through. I think classic wins. I said I thought the yeah. reaper was better, and I still stand by it, but not that there's going to be a void ray. And this widow mine. For those who don't know, it cannot one-shot a Void Ray. Well, maybe with the shield's missing a bit like this, it might. But if a second Void Ray comes out, that Widow Mine's not going to hold. It doesn't get what? to Burrow. GG's get called. Damn. Classic. Tell Kelzer to get out. 2-0. And that is our first 2-0 of the night. So, I mean, that was just dominant. A classic is just like, well, okay, I'm just going just gonna to win this game now. Proxy into Void Ray, which was not the Oracle that we actually thought it was going to be. So that was... Uh, I was incredibly well executed, did a great job at being able to kill off both of those Cyclones, and then there's just really nothing to uh, nothing to take it out. Well, this will lead us to our very first semifinals match, where we're going to have Bion, who is and has been waiting to fight against Classic. And first map's going to be Overgrowth, so while we get this set up, I hope you guys will sit tight. We'll go to a commercial break, and we'll see you in two minutes.